Good morning and welcome to the homestead everybody. So today we're installing some solar modules. The ones you saw us buy off eBay. Uh, we're gonna actually install those on our homemade racking system. We've actually got help. We brought help in all the way from Florida. A uh, friend of ours, Jim, come up from Florida to help us install this. It's 90 something degrees here in Maine, so Jim keeps complaining it's cold, but we're, uh, we're gonna get things unstrapped. We're gonna get things set up. But what we've done is we cut one hemlock log on the sawmill and we built a rack out of four by fours and we're going to use some pretty simple leg bolts is clamps for the modules so this is the only thing we've purchased for this project is a, a box of these so well and the modules of course so about 45 bucks for a box of these so we're going to go ahead and get set up and Sue will bring you back here in a minute when Jim and I got a module ready to go in place. Actually, you guys are Let's go around each other. Don't trip over the oil. Well, that'll make a great one, huh? <laughs> I'll start right here. Yeah, since this is the uh, non-shaded part, you fell off. Halfway on up there? I think so. That's it, right about there. This is where we cracked the glass. Oops. I wonder what the wind load is. So you have to put in your mid clamps <laughs> before you put the next module on and see if they'll keep your spacing. Now I'll put another module on top. It'd be easier just to go up the mid clamps. <laughs> oh, oh, that was the do not stack on me cone. You're not worried about that, are you? No. We should have got a little bit more on this one. Uh, get a little close. So that's our plan. You can see they're on there good and rugged. So I think Sue's going to set you guys up somewhere where you can just watch us. And we're just going to keep on going and get 10 of these up here.
there you go. What did it take? All of 20 minutes? So, that's it. What we'll probably end up doing is coming in here and making something that goes over that lip and comes down just so those end ones don't pull out. But if you come around back, we'll show you what we're going to do electrically. And as we mentioned, this array is for next winter when we have power outages. This is going to be DC coupled. Um, but we have an engineer actually coming out probably tomorrow from midnight to make some progress on the 600 volt charge controllers. So we're going to wire all 10 of these in a single string for about 500 and something volts. And we have our green and white number 10 wire down there. So green is always positive in our case. You see, we like to really use green for everything. White will be our DC negative. And because we're using a wooden frame, we don't need to ground it, right? So we didn't need a ground wire. So according to Jim anyways. Um, honestly, the price of copper right now is just insane. So the number 10 UF wire to go back there would have been about 700 bucks. And I had a spool of number 10 THHN white and THHN green. So we used what we had instead of going buying something. Uh, we will end up these modules as you can see, the connectors are real dirty. So we're gonna end up cutting these connectors off and just wiring up them together into a single string. We'll eventually get some kind of post in a box down here where all these wires come in and we'll neaten it up some, but we think this is gonna work. Sue's gotta finish staining it and Jim and I have to finish wiring it. So we'll bring it back when we've got it wired up and show you what it looks like all wired up with the wires all you know, screwed and zip tied to the hemlock and everything. and. Uh, We'll go from there. So hold on and we'll be right back. So what we're doing is, as I said, we're cutting our connectors off and uh, we're just twisting these together. And we're using a good old fashioned wire nut for now. We are actually making sure the wire nut points up so it doesn't hold water. And we'll put a little bit of tape on it too. We're trying to make a really high quality electrical connection here. And then I'm just taking a couple staples and I'm actually just kind of rolling this up where it makes sense and putting it up under the module like that. Stapling it in place. And then we'll grab the other one. So it'll do the same thing. Now you could cut these leads shorter so they don't have all the slack, but then if you ever want to do something different, you wouldn't have the lead to do it. So I don't really recommend that. But that's about it. We're not going to bring you along for all this. We're going to keep on doing that. We're going to get it connected up to our number 10 and the number 10 goes all the way into the power shed. And then we'll have a array that is 458 volts open circuit at standard test conditions. So we may end up putting a few more out here temporarily for the engineer when he gets here. But for now, that's going to be good for us. That's going to work good this winter. And a sting single string, 200 feet back to the power shed on number 10 had about a 1.6% voltage drop. So that's actually really good. I think you want to try to stay around, what, 3% or less, Jim? 2 to 3. 2 to 3% on voltage drop. So that's, that's going to work really well for us. So thanks for watching. Any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.